The name of the Lord will bless the Lord for bringing us your way again today so on this note I welcome you to the online prep of the directorate of Christian education the Sunday school department today we'll be taking the sixth lesson of the adults conventional Sunday school manual the sixth lesson with the topic speaking in an unknown tongue speaking in an unknown tongue I'm personally excited about this topic because it is one of the blessings of the Holy Spirit to the need to in our in this dispensation in the dispensa in this dispensation it is one of the blessings the holy spirit has blessed us with in the old testament as much as the holy spirit manifested through them nothing was recorded as regards speaking in an unknown tongue but we can see that even till now that we're enjoying it this is one of the blessings that we've seen that we have seen in the new testament and still in operation today i pray that god will illuminate our hearts in the name of jesus let's take the opening prayer say with me father help me to understand what is available to me speaking in the holy ghost take a moment to pray that prayer father help me through this teaching to understand what is available to me through the Holy Spirit, through speaking in tongues, in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall he be in Jesus' mighty name. Um, let's take our memory verse. Our memory verse is seen in the book of Mark 16, 17. Mark 16, 17. Let's take it together. It says, And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongue let's take it again and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues mark 16 17 i'm excited about that memory verse alone why because it says this sign shall follow them that believe is not referring to people in the 16th century in the 17th century them and it's not just talking about some some people is talking about them who believe in him irrespective of the time they exist on the surface of the earth since the holy spirit has been given unto us a bible passage can be found in the book of Acts 19 verses 1 to 6 Acts 19 verses 1 to 6 it reads thus and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and find certain disciples he said unto them have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much had whether there, there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, So unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him. We should come after him, that he is on Christ Jesus. When they had this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, upon them, 
the Holy Ghost came on them and they speak with tongues and prophesied. The Lord bless the reading of that word. Let's quickly take our introduction. The lesson introduction says our Lord Jesus Christ declared that the ability to speak with new tongues shall be one of the signs that follow everyone who believes in him. That we can see in Mark 16, 17. Of course, the Bible clearly says that and these signs shall follow them. We have read it up there. That believe, them that believe. He didn't say them who existed in previous centuries. Them that believe. And in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. While every believer receives the Holy Spirit at the point of conversion, that is clearly stated in Acts 238 when Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. That is when you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So that is clear. Believers are expected, believers are expected to continue to test and hunger for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So speaking in tongues is a divine language manifested when one is baptized with the Holy Spirit. The ability to speak in an unknown tongue is one of the outward, one of the physical evidence of the overflow of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. This we can see in Acts 2.4. The Bible says, and they were all filled with with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave all to us. So in this lesson, we shall attempt to answer some of the mind-boggling questions about speaking in an unknown tongue and its benefits. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The aim of the lesson is to study about speaking in an unknown tongue. So let's the teaching Okay, let's take our text review. Before we go to the teaching matter, let's take our text review. Acts 19, 1 to 6, we can see the Apostle Paul himself engaging the disciples he met at Ephesus in the, and in their conversation. Like we read earlier on, he inquired, wanted to know whether they have been baptized by the Holy Spirit. Then we can see that in verse 2a. And when you check the verse 2b, you can hear their res re response. They replied him that we have not so much hard do whether there be any Holy Ghost. Then he asked them, so since you people said you have been baptized, unto what were you actually baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism, of course. Then thank God for the Apostle Paul. Then he said unto them that yes, of a truth, oh, John truly baptized for repentance so that people can believe Jesus Christ who is to come after him. But there is another baptism. So in verse 5, having listened to Paul, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. Then John gave them, I mean, the apostle Paul gave them, I mean, led them into receiving those gifts. Verse 6, it says, and he laid his hands on them. Paul laid his hands on them. Then the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, came on them. That can be seen in verse 6b. And in verse 6c, the Bible says, and they speak with songs and prophesy. So to our, to our teaching method is the lecture method. That should lead us to our outlines. The first outline talks about, says speaking in an unknown tongue and the gift of diverse kind of tongues compared. You know, when we're doing the introduction, we said we are going to be answering some mind boggling questions because People believe, some people believe in tongues, some people here have heard about it, some people don't even understand the old things as if he's so confused. They see, hear diverse kind of tongues, they hear speaking in tongues, but by God's grace, this outline is going to be illuminating that as we do the comparison. So the ability to speak in an unknown tongue, as well as the gift of diverse kind of tongues, if I've been hearing that before, is given by the Holy Spirit. The unknown tongue, the diverse kind of tongues, they are given by the Holy Spirit. 
that is the source not any other person or not any other being is the Holy Spirit and it is distinctive of the present dispensation the present Holy Spirit dispensation and it began with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost that was why at the beginning I said I'm so excited about that in the Old Testament go and check it very well despite the very, very manifestation of the Holy Spirit that we saw in the Old Testament even that that were repeated in the New Testament and even now the gift of the unknown tongue I mean speaking in an unknown tongue was not recorded in that dispensation because that was not the dispensation of the Holy Spirit so with this you can see that it is peculiar distinctive of the present Holy Spirit dispensation I thought you'd be excited about that hallelujah because we are part of that dispensation then it is not to be bought with money or length this gift speaking in, in an unknown tongue or the gift of diverse kind of tongues cannot be bought with money and can be lent just like every other manifestation and giftings of the Holy Ghost look at Matthew 10 8, where the Bible says that we should heal the sick cleanse the leper raise the dead cast out devils freely you have received the Bible had it that freely give it is emphasized there that freely we have received and freely sh should he be given. Look at Acts 8, 1922. Acts 8, 1920. And when Simon saw that true laying of all of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered money. Verse 19, saying, Give me also this power that so whoever I lay my hands to, they may receive the Holy Ghost. But what happened? Paul, the Peter, the apostle Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee because you have thought that the gift of God can be purchased with money. You think the gift, in other words, you think the gift of God can be purchased with money? No way. So it cannot be bought. Now, next, we need to distinguish between the two. We have said that the Holy Spirit is the source, it can be bought with money. They are also, they have their areas of differences. So let's distinguish between the two. First one, while every believer is expected to speak in an unknown tongue, we can see that in our Bible passage, not all may receive the gift of diverse kind of tongues. At salvation, when we, have, when we receive a measure of Christ, and when we thirst and continue in it, just like just like apostle paul laid his hand on those people and they receive the baptism of the holy spirit every every believer is expected to speak in an unknown tongue but not all may receive the diverse kind of tongues diverse kind of tongues is part of the nine giftings of the holy spirit is one of the is one of the inspirational gifts listed in the book of 1 Corinthians 2 10, the Bible says to another, He gave the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirit, to another, diverse kind of tongues, to another, interpretation of tongues. Of course, you agree with me that uh, not all believers work miracles, it doesn't. It doesn't remove them from being God's children. Not all believers prophesy. The same way diverse tongue may not is not for everybody. But the Holy Spirit gives as he wills. Thirdly, you need to note that both can take place simultaneously for some believers. We have said it. Is that the prerogative of the Holy Spirit? Is the one that distributes? Uh, I mean, that gives that gifts men as he wills. He gifts men as he wills, and you can see this in Act two, four to twelve, in the book of Act two, we can see. It. And when the when when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance 
there you can see the unknown tongue then now i want to bring out the diverse tongue and there were dwelling at jerusalem jews devout men out of every nation under heaven now when this was noised abroad that is the tongue they were speaking the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man had them speak in his own language and they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another behold are not all these which speak galileans and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born they began to mention the languages Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the dwellers in Mes Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia and in Pontus and in Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, in Egypt and in the part of Libya, about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, preachers and the Arabians. We do hear them speaking our tongues, the wonderful works of God. The last verse, and they were all amazed. And we're in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? What meaneth this? So we can see the diverse kind of tongues taking place simultaneously for some with for some believers when they receive the Holy Ghost baptism. If you are desirous of this, I pray that the Lord will give to you will give to you this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Then when a believer speaks in an unknown tongue, now we're going back to the unknown tongue. When a believer speaks in an unknown tongue, number one, he speaks mysteries unto God, which cannot be understood by men. What are mysteries? Mysteries are things the ordinary mind cannot comprehend. First Corinthians 14 to says, For he that speaketh in on in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God for no man understandeth him how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries hallelujah I'm so excited so secondly God can however speak through one with the gift of diverse kinds of tongue to men with interpretations where necessary I like to take that again. We have said that the unknown tongue speaketh is mystery, talking mysteries to God. But God can, however, through diverse kind of tongues, speak to men through a person with interpretation where necessary. Acts 2 46. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance and there were dwellings we have read that before all of them were hearing they were, the jews there were hearing men speaking in their own languages let's move on so let's move on speaking in an unknown tongue is for self education edification Speaking in an unknown tongue is for self-edification. 1 Corinthians 14.4 He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. Self-edification, emboldening yourself in the Holy Spirit, building up yourself in the Holy Spirit is what you do to yourself when you speak mysteries to God, when you speak in an unknown tongue. While well, diverse kind of tongues, when it's interpreted, edifies the church or those around. It equals diverse kind of tongues when it's interpreted equals prophesying, equals prophecy. So I hope we're getting that. Let's check Acts 2 7 to 10. The Bible says, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, and not all these which speak. Galileans, we have read that one as well. Also, let's move on. A first class activity says, Why do you think some people mock those who spoke in unknown tongues? According to Acts 2 13, why do you think some people mock those who speak 
in an unknown tongue because you can be caught in that Bible passage where they were saying, ah, these men are full of wine. Why? Students, I mean teachers, let's guide our students to give their answers. That takes us to the second half line. Benefits of speaking in an unknown tongue. There are so many benefits of speaking in the unknown tongue. The first one, it improves the believer's prayer, prayer life. Speaking in an unknown tongue is not a thing any well-meaning Christian should take for granted or should, should, should joke with. Why? Because it improves a believer's prayer life. Supernatural ability to talk with God effectively. How wonderful will that be? And you can also intercede for others. Speaking in tongues make praying prayer very easy. Romans 8 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities because we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit in itself makes an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Makes prayer easy. First Corinthians 4 2. He that speaketh not, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not not unto men but unto God for no man understandeth him albeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries so it makes prayer easy how would you not like it for instance maybe you have been you you, you have a paper something you, you have been expecting a letter and someone has kept it under the table and then you are just saying Rosha, kaboro, dozi, you are talking to God directly and because of that God is acting on your behalf God is urging the person putting fire under the person that where is my son, daughter's letter where is my son's letter wouldn't you be happy you find yourself in that case so it helps our prayer life secondly self edification it tears up a believer's faith first corinthians 14 4 he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself you embolden yourself you build up yourself but he that prophesies edifies the church you can see speaking in an unknown tongue helps you to get yourself edified Jude 20 the Bible says but ye beloved building up yourself on your most holy faith pray in the Holy Ghost pray in the Holy Ghost so you are building up yourself you can imagine building a skyscraper so that is what you're doing to yourself when you pray in tongues thirdly it's a means of yielding our tongue to God no man can tame the tongue the tongue is not easy to tame but through speaking in tongues it can be tamed J james 3 8 but the tongue can no man tame is an unruly evil full of deadly poison but glory hallelujah because by the holy spirit the whole body can change the whole body can change including this tongue this tongue can be changed when we pray in tongues the fourth one Praying in tongue is a weapon of spiritual warfare. First Corinthians 14:2. The Bible says, If a speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how behave he speaketh mysteries. I've said it earlier on. Would you not rather say Shaka Bokata Kaza and someone who is somewhere trying to harm you just receive missiles in the spirit just because you are speaking in tongues? You are communicating to your God. Your spirit is praying with groanings that cannot be uttered. The Holy Spirit is praying on your behalf. And definitely you know that this means victory. So it is a weapon of spiritual warfare it also assists believers to sing praise and give thanks to god first corinthians 14 15 says what is it then i will pray with the spirit and i will sing with the spirit I, I, I will, what is it then let me take it again i'll pray with the spirit and i will pray with the understanding also i will sing with the spirit and i will sing with the understanding also i Thought someone would just join me and say, Retose de legebo shata labaya igalabo shata. It helps you to sing praises on 
to the Lord. That brings us to the end of the lesson. And let's consider our class activity two. Our class activity two says, how can speaking in an unknown tongue help believers to witness for Christ? How can speaking in an unknown tongue help believers to witness to witness for Christ according to Acts 1 8? One more time, teachers, you are implored to guide the students. You have been doing it. God will continue to help you. In summary, speaking in an unknown tongue and in diverse tongues edify the speaker and the church respectively. You know, we have said it that when you speak in tongues, you edify yourself. Same way when you speak in diverse tongues, with interpretation, you edify the church. In conclusion, speaking in our own tongue is a fulfillment of the promise of God. It is for believers who will not just desire it, but fully tap into the benefits, irrespective of their church denomination, their tribes, or nation. May the Lord help us in Jesus' mighty name. Let's take our closing prayer. Say with me, Father, baptize me afresh with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Father, baptize me afresh with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Please remember to tell the Lord that gift that you desire. Father, Please baptize me afresh with the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you desire to speak in diverse tongues, say it now, Father. Please baptize me afresh with the gift of diverse kind of tongues in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. And with this, we have come to the end of this broadcast. We say the Lord bless you. Kindly subscribe like, share, and comment. The Lord himself will increase you even as you partner with his work in the mighty name of Jesus. Stay blessed till we come your way next time. Shalom. You now